Hello, I'm Dr. Vita Rattan, and this channel is dedicated to skincare for skin of color. As you know, I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. Now, with us, our melanocytes are large and they are easily triggered. One scratch, one bite, or one burn, and we hyperpigment. Literally, I say <laughs> one mosquito can take down our skin, and we really have to be careful that we don't irritate our skin because our skin is unforgiving, and we have to be more educated and more empowered when it comes to taking care of it. I wish more products were available to us that didn't irritate the skin, but majority of skincare wasn't really designed with skin of color in mind. And so it really is on us to make sure that we know what to buy and what to steer clear of. Today's video is a dear one to me because it's something that I suffer from and have suffered with for over a decade. Um, and that is hyperpigmentation, specifically melasma. So if that sounds good to you and how we should be treating it for skin of color, the ingredients we should be using, the mistakes that get made, then please give me a thumbs up and let's dive right in. So melasma is far more prevalent in females as opposed to males. It tends to be because of the hormones estrogen and progesterone. And this is why it also tends to be worse during pregnancy and if you're taking the oral contraceptive pill. The trigger tends to be UV. Um, and so the two together, estrogen sensitizing the melanocyte to UV leads to pigmentation. And it tends to take place in the most exposed areas. So for example, the cheekbones, the zygoma area actually accounts for about 80% of where melasma starts. Now the problem is we have something called cell talk, which is great because when it starts here, it spreads and talks to the cells around the face. So it starts here and then you tend to, it tends to also occur in the upper lip area and the forehead area and then it spreads and often it starts off as tiny little freckles which is how it started off for me i remember so clearly my mom said to me what's that on your cheek and i just thought it was mascara and i'm rubbing away rubbing away and it wasn't going <clears throat> and my mom said no actually you're getting the beginning of melasma she said that means you're not taking care of your skin and this is basically your one shot before it really does spread and that was quite a shock for me because I was in my late, I mean, I was in my 20s, mid 20s. I was young and I just, it just hadn't occurred to me. I feel like when you're young, you take your skin for granted. And I did have really good skin actually as a teenager, touch wood. I had many other issues, but then my skin was actually okay. And it was the first time that I started to, you know, notice hyperpigmentation. And this is how it, you know, how it works. When, when you are affected by something, all you can see around you is hyperpigmentation. You will carry on as normal and you think these freckles are cute. And one day they start to, expand and amalgamate and then they just start to form large patches and then they're just no longer cute and you know you've you're now in a, a point of full-blown melasma that you really need to work hard at to reverse if not even get professional treatment you know i don't even want you to get to that point that's why we go on and on about sunscreen uv is really the biggest enemy and no matter which ingredients you put on your skin to try and treat your melasma, it will not work if you have not 100% blocked UV from your skin. It's that serious. And the problem is that with UV, we don't even know when, it's, when, your, when your sunscreen has stopped working effectively, right? The way sunscreen works is that it forms a continuous film on the skin. There's no alarm bell that goes off to say, you know, do, 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 your sunscreen is not working anymore. Um, and UV is hitting your skin because anyone with melasma will know that five minutes of direct sunlight will worsen your pigmentation. So there are a few things that you can do to help yourself. Obviously your sunscreen is critical. I love mineral sunscreen SPF 50. I love mineral sunscreen for melasma because for a number of reasons, uh, but first of all, it's anti-inflammatory. And so it's very soothing for anybody with any eczema, any issues with damaged skin barrier. But also with melasma, especially if you're wearing actives at nighttime and your skin is feeling a bit sensitive, 
I would always opt for zinc oxide um, SPF 50. The other reason I love it is um, because it doesn't enter the bloodstream. There are some new age filters, chemical filters that also don't enter the bloodstream. Um, so it's just one of the reasons that I like it. There are no, to date, we don't know if there's any impact of chemical sunscreens entering the bloodstream. Um, we're waiting on data for that, but it's one of the reasons we tend to say to pregnant ladies, you know, opt for mineral over chemical. Now, the issue we've had with zinc oxide is that it leaves a white cast on the skin. And so, as you know, for the last two years, I have been formulating the world's first mineral sunscreen, which has got 17% zinc oxide in it um, for skin of color, and it is invisible on all skin. I want it to be universal. Um, I wanted my husband to be able to wear it. So yeah, we decided to go to make it invisible rather than tinted. So, you know, men and women feel comfortable wearing it. And I'm wearing it right now under my makeup. So we haven't launched this yet, but we will. And it's designed for skin of color. I've actually put in a trademarked ingredient called Melishield into the sunscreen, which is called Inzincable. And Melishield is a stem cell complex which actually reduces melasma during the day. So it is skin pH neutral and UV stable. And so during the day, it will slow down the rate of melanin production from the hyperactive melanocytes. Right now we are in clinical trials for skin of color and I cannot wait to actually release it and have you all have just the best sunscreen for skin of color. So keep your eyes open. There's a link down below uh, if you want to be on the VIP list for that as well. Right, moving on. Um, the other things that you need to have are of course your wide brimmed hat. <laughs> I'm sure you've seen me wear this <laughs> over and over in all my holidays. And the other really important thing that I wear and that I tend to recommend is the Dr. V anti melasma sunglasses. So I literally formulated, I made these for my own face just so that I could protect my whole zygoma area. That's where melasma tends to start for me. And I just didn't want to spread it across my face. So if you, if, if zygoma melasma is your issue and you aren't able to apply your sunscreen every two hours. I still say reapply your sunscreen every two hours, but you know, if it really is impossible and you're out, then this, at least you know, this bit is protected from UV. Okay, so your suns, your routine that I would say in the morning is to cleanse your skin with a micellar gel wash with no fragrance in it, followed by a fatty moisturizer, ideally with ceramides and peptides in it, um, because if you're getting melasma, you're also past the point of 21 years old where your collagen production is slowing down. And so you want to also be adding in peptides for anti-aging purposes. I would then use your SPF 50 on top. So that is your morning routine. At nighttime, I would say again, uh, cleanse your skin. I would double cleanse because you want to remove any makeup or any sunscreen during the day using an oil-based wash, followed by your micellar gel wash to remove any other dirt. I would then use I'm now gonna to list for you all the ingredients that I love, the tyrosinase inhibitors and the antioxidants that I love for melasma for skin of color that will reduce the rate of melanin production without irritating the skin cells around it or making the situation worse when you stop. So you don't wanna get anything that's, you don't wanna use anything that's gonna to lead to rebound pigmentation. So the ingredients that I love, pen and paper, are kojic dipalmitate, alpha arbutin, tetrahexyl decal ascorbate. That is my favorite form of vitamin C because it's fat soluble. It, you get the maximum penetration into the uh, dermis to stimulate collagen. Uh, also sodium ascorbyl phosphate, which is your water soluble version of vitamin C. Octadecanoic dioic acid, which is a very powerful tyrosinase inhibitor for skin of color that doesn't irritate the cells and that's important and works very well in combination with alpha arbutin. Um, over earth sea extract, licorice extract, I'm sure you've heard of these. Um, and then three forms of vitamin A. I always use vitamin A um, in threes because I want to attack the vitamin A pathway at multiple points, but I don't want to go in high on retinol, which is the alcohol 
retin O, right? Uh, because that's irritating. So the for skin of color, we have to be very careful. So I use retinaldehyde, my favorite form of vitamin A. It's only one step removed from retinoic acid, but virtually no irritation. Retinol and retinol palmitate. So guess what? It didn't exist. All these ingredients in one product didn't exist. If it existed, I would say go and buy it, <laughs> but it didn't. So guess what I did for you? I created the world's first facial pigmentation kit for skin of color. I put all the ingredients in it. Plus, of course, there's no fragrance, there's no essential oils, there's no denatured alcohol, and it's cruelty free. Everything made in the UK and EU by law has to be cruelty free. So it's important to know that. Um, oh, I'm so proud of this. I'm, I just feel like for the first time I can help people globally. I've made you quite a few videos on layering for pigmentation, whether it's the ordinary or inky list. Um, the problem is that you're never gonna get more than two or three layers of actives penetrating. By the time you put the fourth layer of active on, already this is a waxy layer of skin. Um, it's just, you're just not gonna get the benefit of it. At that point, it's just a waste of time and money. And for us, I've always said that cocktail creams of tyrosinase inhibitors are really best for us because we actually need all the ingredients simultaneously at the correct percentages um, penetrating at the same time. Otherwise, we just don't get the we just don't get the benefits of it. I've run clinical trials on two, three, four tyrosinase inhibitors and have seen zero results for melasma. For melasma, we need eight to 10 different tyrosinase inhibitors at the same time. The problem is it's an expensive product to make. Retinaldehyde itself is one of the most expensive ingredients, which is why you just don't find it in products. Tetrahexyl ascorbate is extremely expensive, which again is why you don't find it in many products. But these are the ingredients that we need to treat melasma for skin of color because those melanocytes are stubborn. They are difficult to treat. And even with this kit, it takes five to six months to start seeing a reduction. Some people up to nine months to see a reduction. This is with the strongest actives, the strongest kit um, of tyrosinase inhibitors. Having said that, I would always say start cheap. So start with the cheapest product that is also a tyrosinase inhibitor. For example, if 2% alpha arbutin or tranexamic acid is giving you great results, then by all means carry on with that. You definitely should not be purchasing this. Um, if you're getting great results with uh, mandelic acid, say, and you know, you're good with that, great, don't purchase this. This kit really is the expensive alternative when the single actives aren't working anymore and you need something for your melasma because it's really getting you down. Again, if it's not getting you down, then again, please don't buy this because it is expensive and it does take time for it to work. You're gonna to have to be patient. Okay, so what we layer on top of the facial pigmentation kit is actually a fatty non-fragrance moisturizer. So the same one you wore in the morning is absolutely fine. Um, and then on top of that, if, you, if your skin is particularly dry, then okay, you can put 100% squalene on top, but actually if you can avoid it, it's better too, because I just don't want to dilute the tyrosinase inhibitors. And already in these in the kit, I've actually put in emollients, I've already put in humectants, so you don't need anything additional on top. Um, so all I really want you to do is clean your face, put this onto the melasma, the pigmented areas, you can moisturize the rest of your skin, um, and that's basically it. That would be the nighttime routine. Okay, just so you get a closer look to see what the kit looks like. So it opens up like that. So proud. <laughs> okay, so I'm in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video. So don't forget to ask me your questions on melasma, how to use the kit, etc. You can purchase it from the link below, which is skincare by Dr. V. Don't forget to subscribe to you to YouTube, but also to my Instagram at the Hyperpigmentation Clinic and Skincare by Dr. V, and on TikTok, which is Dr. Mita Ratan. I've also got a free guide for you for skincare for skin of color. The link is down below. Thank you so much for watching.